Wow, what a beautiful crowd. So you know all these elves in the academy? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Rumor has it that they're learning the alphabet. Because they're elves. <coughs> the alphabet. Boo, you suck. Get off the stage. My fault, I'll destroy you. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week. This week, we're taking a look at a creature so obscure, most D&D players question whether or not it really even exists. But rest assured, the Dungeon Dad team has done all the research and the pink dragon is all too real. As always, my objective here today is to go over this monster's in-game lore, its publication history, as well as provide you with an updated 5th edition stat block and a few potential encounter ideas. So the pink dragon is kind of like most other dragons, except it tells jokes and breathes bubbles instead of flames or acid. I'm not kidding, this is a real monster. To take a look at where this creature actually came from, let's roll the clock back to the year 1990. George Bush Sr. is President of the United States, Home Alone was about to become everyone's favorite Christmas movie, Kevin! and Tim Berners-Lee had just proposed a funny little idea for something called the World Wide Web. Over in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, things were popping off with a D&D and rumors of a second edition. I bet the edition wars were so much simpler back then. Also, in April of that year, Dragon Magazine issue 156 was published, and what an issue it was. This printing of the acclaimed magazine was special in that it contained a bunch of over-the-top, goofy, fan-submitted monsters. See, back in the day, Dragon Magazine used to actually publish monsters that were submitted to the magazine by its readers. There's a lot of really good creatures that came about from people like you and me just writing into TSR and saying, hey, we'd be cool if you added this to your game. Now, all the monsters in this edition of the magazine in particular were creatures that had been submitted but rejected because they were deemed too silly. But eventually, someone at TSR said, eh. Fuck it, and decided to just publish all these monsters in one singular issue. Dragon 156 also includes this artwork, which might be the best thing I've ever seen. Oh! Among these fan-submitted monsters were the Blink Woolly Mammoth, which is basically a Blink dog that has Woolly Mammoth stats, the Death Sheep, the Killer Spruce Tree, and of course, the Pink Dragon. The Pink Dragon was submitted by none other than Gene McGuire, so Gene, if you're out there and you happen to see this video, cool monster. I wonder if Gene realized that 32 years later, some fucking clown with a YouTube channel would be talking about their homebrew monster. So, what exactly makes the Pink Dragon so silly? I mean, aside from its brilliant pink highlighter-esque coloration, the Pink Dragon is pretty different from its draconian cousins in many ways. For starters, while most, if not all, other chromatic dragons on the rainbow spectrum tend to be evil, pink dragons are actually quite good-natured. Mechanically speaking, they're chaotic neutral, so they're not necessarily good guys, but they're certainly not evil. They don't revel in destruction so much as they revel in revelry. See, the defining trait of the pink dragon is its sense of humor. They love to laugh, and they love to make others laugh. Telling jokes is kind of a way of life for them, and as beings with nigh endless lifespans, they have all the time in the world to perfect their stand-up routines. You suck. This incredible gift for telling jokes, of course, also comes with a fair bit of ego. There's actually a line of text in the original entry for this monster which reads, Pink dragons love to talk, but they're also prone to eat those who do not laugh at their jokes. These dragons are pretty unique, and seeing as they got their start in AD&D, in order to update them to 5th edition, I had to make some interesting choices. But I'm really happy with how the end result turned out. Like most dragons, if things actually come to combat, it wants to fly around, use its breath weapon, and generally tear people to shreds with its claw and bite attacks. I'm sure most of you watching this right now have a pretty good idea of what dragons in Dungeons and Dragons are capable of, so I'm just going to go over what makes the pink dragon unique and the abilities I added to it. The first thing I want to talk about is the pink dragon's breath weapon. As I mentioned, it breathes not flames nor acid, 
But bubbles, but bubbles. Unlike other dragons, this breath weapon does not cause any actual points of damage, but instead it blinds any creatures caught in its wake. I'm sure you've probably experienced getting shampoo or soap in your eyes at some point, so it's kind of like that. Except there's also a dragon looming over you, so I guess it's actually much worse. The other side effect of this bubble breath attack is it makes the area extremely slippery, meaning that creatures who want to cross the now slick surface have to use extra movement and also risk falling prone. It might not be the most damaging move, but if you hit your party with slippery dragon goop, they're gonna have a bad time. The second ability I want to talk about here is something of my own creation, but it requires a little bit of context to go over. In addition to a dragon's breath weapon, its other iconic trait is the Frightful Presence ability. The fear aura that they project is meant to inspire a sense of the feeling you might get witnessing a massive, highly intelligent apex predator soaring into battle. The pink dragon, as you might guess, does not have Frightful Presence. Considering everything we know about this dragon so far, that makes perfect sense. But I figured it was a missed opportunity to not give it some other type of aura ability, so in lieu of Frightful Presence, I gave the pink dragon an action called Comedic Presence. It works kind of the same way, but the flavor here is that the dragon swoops in and tells you just the funniest joke you have ever heard. He will think of the funniest joke in the world, and as a result, he will die laughing. Rather than being frightened of the dragon, everyone who hears it is subject to an effect similar to the hideous laughter spell, causing them to fall prone and waste their turn laughing hysterically until they can make their saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> to the dungeon masters watching right now, this is a chance to drop a devastating pun on your group. Truly punish them, if you will. The final thing I'll mention here is that I also gave the dragon a few legendary actions. And as many of you probably know, legendary actions did not exist in AD&D. Of the three legendary actions you'll see listed on the sheet, two of them are pretty standard fare, however the third one is something your party will not see coming. The Good Impression legendary action allows the dragon to cast a spell it has seen someone else cast within the past hour. This is kind of a neat ability because because it's only as powerful as any spellcasters within the dragon's proximity are. I mostly put this in there because I love the idea of a player casting a spell like Fireball at the dragon, only to have the pink dragon hit them with the Uno reverse card. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what this dragon's whole deal is, because now we're going to move along and talk about a few. Where to begin? The pink dragon is just such a fun monster. It falls perfectly into a niche occupied by very few creatures. That niche being a comedic sort of jokey monster, but a monster that could fuck you up in a major way if the encounter takes a bad turn. Something that defines dragons is their penchant for hoarding things. Personally, I've always loved the idea that different types of dragons might hoard different things. For example, the classic red dragon is known for hoarding copious amounts of gold, and the white dragon tends to hoard trophies in the form of creatures it's frozen with its icy breath. This naturally got me thinking, what sort of things might a pink dragon hoard? The conclusion I came to is jokes. Rather than demanding tribute in gifts of gold or other kinds of treasure, I could totally see a pink dragon agreeing to help out an adventuring party if they can tell it a joke it's never heard before. That might seem really easy at first, but coming up with fresh comedic material isn't easy, especially when your audience is 10,000 years old and has probably invented most of the jokes you've ever heard. If you want to pull a little sneaky on your players, maybe the dragon even sends them on some type of quest in search of an ancient ancient scroll. This scroll is said to be sealed away in a long-lost dungeon at the edge of the Sea of Stars. Perhaps this dragon is even concealing its true nature and hands this mission out to the party while it is polymorph in the form of some humanoid creature. The party then ventures forth on a dangerous mission to retrieve the ancient scroll, expecting that it likely holds some sort of arcane secret or forbidden knowledge, only to find out that the scroll is just a really funny joke written by a bard who lived 10 ages ago. Yeah, I pulled a sneaky on you. 
I adore the idea of the party finding this scroll, opening it up, and just being flabbergasted by what they see inside. Or better yet, maybe they don't even read the scroll and they deliver it to the dragon. The dragon takes the scroll, unrolls it, and stares for a moment as it reads the ancient text, and then just bursts out laughing for 10 minutes straight. If you want to give them a more fantastical role in your world, maybe the pink dragons serve as emissaries of some kind for a trickster god. A major temple to a deity like Garl Glittergold that is protected by a pink dragon could be really interesting. It might even make for a fun dungeon filled with traps and puzzles meant to test the wit of those who would seek the treasures and wisdom hidden within. I could also see a pink dragon taking human humanoid form with a polymorph spell and spending their days traveling around as a famous bard renowned for their quick wit and hilarious stories. A character like that could fit any role, really. They might be a friend to the party, or a cunning rival, a secret villain, or even a patron who has a mentorship with the party's bard. Ultimately, I just think the Pink Dragon is a really fun and light-hearted monster to drop in your D&D world. However you choose to use it, I am positive it will leave an impression on your players and the stories they tell about your game. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, and happy April Fool's Day! If you enjoy the content I'm making over here, please consider leaving a like on the video or leaving a comment because that stuff helps me out a bunch. Just think of it as a prank on the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> and as always, if you want to use the pink dragon at your D&D &D table and you're not playing a D&D &D, but you are playing 5th edition, you can find the stat block in the description down below in the form of a Google document. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, you will of course find the 5th edition monster manual style stat block over on the Patreon page, which is also linked down in the description below. Also, in keeping with the old ways, it is time for Patron of the Week. Das TTV, thank you so much for your patronage. Das, pretty cool of you. Also, do not forget that if you have a monster you'd like to see show up on Monster of the Week, definitely let me know in the comments down below, over on Twitter, or in the Discord server, all of which is linked in the description below as well. Who knows, you might just see your suggestions show up on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.